looking for magic carps at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code lvd for a 15 percent discount on orders over ten dollars while supporting the channel at the same time so what do we have pack one pick one decent pack we've had a bit of experience with the midnight clock can be quite good against the mill decks if they don't mill it which is of course not a given but uh, getting to shuffle your graveyard back is pretty decent against the mill decks and then ju just the ability in general can be nice next up um, keeper of fables is very good too in the green decks especially paired with blue evasive creatures ginger brutes just kind of small evasive creatures in general uh, searing barrage probably the best common in this pack of course drawing cards this is not a May ability, so it can also be a drawback against the mill decks, which are a bit uh, too popular on Arena. Like, Animating Fairy is fine too, but it does commit you pretty specifically to a deck that has a bunch of artifacts. Now, of course, there's a lot of artifacts you don't mind playing in most decks, like the Golden Egg. Turning a Witching Well into a creature can also be fine, but if they kill it, then you don't get to draw your cards. I think I prefer Keeper here over Midnight Clock. All right, got some good options in the second pack. Sir Farron could lead to a nice beatdown deck. Canvas Transformation is always fine, like worst case, you still get to draw cards, so you can upgrade a small creature or downgrade a big creature. Scorching Dragonfire, probably the best common in the pack. Reaper of Night also decent. So I've got some options here. I can just take the green card, stick to green for now, and try and draft a slightly more aggressive deck. Sir Farron probably at their best in red-green, but can still be fine outside of it. Like, could even be mono-green, plenty of pump spells in green, like the Appetites and the Adventure card. Otherwise, Scorching Dragonfire could set us up for red-green as well. Keeps our options open. I've been pretty impressed whenever I've faced Sir Farron. So, let's see if we can draft a more aggressive green deck. Got a couple options here as well. Once in future, has been pretty decent, especially because the mill decks are so popular. There's usually plenty of targets in the graveyard for this to get back. Tree Folk, nice combo with the Keeper of Fable, with uh, Sir Farron, I mean. And just a nice Curve Topper in general for the green decks. A Reef Soul, definitely a candidate here as well. It's just an excellent removal spell. Could set us up for Black Green, which is uh, usually a more mid-rangey food deck. Which means that Sir Farron wouldn't be at her best in Black Green, but of course still a good card. I think I'm leaning once in future, just to make sure we have that late game card draw that sometimes we lack in the aggressive decks. And it's usually easier to get three folks later. Well, that's a th fourth pick Innkeeper, that's pretty late. Savvy Hunter also excellent, Out Muscle, Acolyte, all those cards would be great. But I don't think I can pass up on an Innkeeper this late. Don't have any adventures yet, but it's not too difficult to pick some up. The Carver would go up in value, the Tree Folk, of course. Other Acolytes. Curious Pair as well. Paladin's gotta be good if we're heavy green. Appetite combos with Sir Farron, any food cards we might pick up. But for right now, I don't mind Paladin. And stick to green instead of taking a white adventure card for the Innkeeper. Could see playing the Intruder to go with our Innkeeper. Can kind of cantrip at 1 mana with an Innkeeper in play, otherwise it's a potential 7 mana play as well. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Squire. Could be okay in like a green-white adventure deck, but even there it's not amazing. Tracker could be decent if we're a beatdown deck. Uh, how many humans do I have? Just Sir Farron? I guess Intruder and Innkeeper too, so lots of our cheap cards are human, which makes the tracker a little bit worse. Uh, Rimrock Knight is also an option, it's an adventure for the Innkeeper. We kind of want to be red-green to maximize Sir Farron. And yeah, both being a non-human and an adventure is kind of the perfect fit for our deck. So I think I'm leaning Rimrock Knight over Tracker and Squire. Like, these cards could be playable in our deck, but if we do end up red-green, the Knight is definitely going to be better than those two. Nothing here that's too exciting. I guess the Halberd could be fine as kind of a way to enhance our creatures. Sure. 
And here we have another Squire if we want it, playing best of one. Could main deck Fell the Pheasant, don't think that's going to be necessary. Same with Return to Nature. Return, probably more main deckable than Fell. There are quite a few enchantment based removal spells worth killing. Thrill could also be fine as a way to kind of discard lands in the late game, which can definitely be an issue for kind of a beatdown deck like this. Yeah, I think I'll speculate on Thrill. Pretty happy with an Appetite, a Dummy could also make the deck, but having a couple pump spells is nice with Sir Farron. Blow Your House Down can also be playable if we're aggressive enough. Could also speculate on Tempting Witch for the food synergies, but it looks like I want to be red-green here. Not our appetites. Alright, so first back went okay. Now I don't have much in the way of removal, passed up on a Scorching Dragonfire and Searing Barrage early, and an Out Muscle as well. But we do have some quality creatures, hoping to pick up more adventures for the Innkeeper. Uh, more removal spells, more cheap creatures to pump up with our various pump effects that we picked up here. Pretty good pack for us. Both the Witch Stalker and the Carver and the Rimrock Knight would be decent. Even the Pixie, like I could still abandon red and move into blue-green. Have an opt in the sideboard too. But the Witch Stalker is going to make the cut no matter what, if we end up red-green or blue-green. It works well with the Insatiable Appetites, so don't see a reason to take anything else. Even a Ginger Brute would be pretty decent here with the Keeper of Fables in the deck. And then I can hope to wheel Rimrock Knight or Carver. Oh wow, this pack is stacked. Can I just take the entire pack and move to pack 3? Man, where do I start? Sundering Stroke, very good at 7. Another Sir Farron, of course, would be excellent. Smasher, a great 4-drop. Searing Barrage, great removal spell. Acolyte, nice adventure for the Innkeeper. Rider, food synergy and good 2-drop. Even Ferocity of the Wilds might be playable in this deck. So we're probably going to wheel something out of this. Now what do I take? My first instinct was a Rampart Smasher, but I did just pick up a Fierce Witch Stalker. I guess I don't have a ton of 4-drops outside of that. I think it's Smasher. Probably would take Sundering Stroke after that, and then Sir Farron maybe over Barrage. I mean, Barrage is very good too, don't get me wrong, but we seem to be heavy green, so we're not going to have the Adamant on Barrage all that often. So yeah, let's take the Smasher and we'll see what wheels here. Like, there's plenty of good cards we can hope to get on the wheel. Merrily Frider, Acolyte are quite likely to still be here, and I'll happily take those. Pretty happy with another Rimrock Knight, Adventure for Innkeeper, Pump Spell in creature form, and we should be aggressive enough where the drawback doesn't matter too much. Raiders could also be fine in this deck. Tracker could be okay. Let's take another knight. Probably don't need a second once in future. They do have diminishing returns. Another Garenbrake Paladin could be okay, but I already have lots of expensive cards. Could potentially still play a second one though. Raging Redcap is quite good with all these pump effects. I've got double Rimrock Knights, potentially double Appetites, Barge in, can potentially wield the Carver. So the Red Cap could be good, or I can take another Paladin at 5. I can definitely use another 5 drop, 3 5 drops is not too many, but then I probably don't want any more. I don't have any 3 drops, so the Red Cap would fill out the curve nicely. So I think I'm leaning Red Cap just to keep ourselves the option of picking up another expensive card later, instead of taking the Paladin now. When in doubt, take the cheaper card is what I say. So let's take the red cap. And the uh, Merrily Frider looks totally fine. Shieldbreaker is totally main deckable. Like a 2 mana 2 one's not exciting, but there's quite a few artifacts worth killing, even just killing a food token can make the difference. Curious Pair would give us more food. How many food synergies do we have? We have Double Appetite, that can definitely make a difference. Merrily Frider is great with food, but that's about it. So I don't need a million food generators and a 1-3 is not exactly what I want in this deck. They're both adventures for the Innkeeper. Let's take the Shieldbreaker. Alright, Trebuchet could be decent. I've got quite a few knights, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
seven. So yeah, the trebuchet looks quite good. And probably gonna play the tracker. And we wield both Carver, Squire and Ginger Brute. I do have quite a few two drops already now with double Rimrock Knight, a Merleaf Rider, Sir Farron. And the Shield Breaker, so I probably don't need to take the Squire too highly. So it's between Carver and Ginger Brute. In terms of pump spells, I have double Appetite, double Rimrock Knight, Barge In. So it's not like we need more, but this could potentially be an upgrade over one of these, since it's also an adventure for the Innkeeper and a creature that we can cast afterwards. Ginger Brute is actually pretty decent here too, especially with the Keeper of Fables. Having kind of a clock that draws us a card every turn is very nice. And a way to close out the game once we get the opponent low enough. So yeah, this is a tough choice. Carver versus Ginger Brutes. Oh, take the Brutes. And probably leaning Merle Frider over Squire. Although again, we don't have a ton of food generators. The Ginger Brute does count as food, so that's also relevant. Could also just take another Halberd. If our deck is going to be all creatures and pump spells, then having a permanent pump spell could be okay. Yeah, like equipment are usually pretty good in creature-heavy decks like this. So don't hate taking another one. And then I can play fewer pump spells and just more creatures. Another tracker seems these. Probably not going to play the dwarves. Don't know if I'm playing the Curious Pair, but it's an option. Alright, last pack. What are we missing? Having a few actual removal spells to take out problematic creatures would be nice, so... Out Muscles, Scorching Dragon Fires, and Searing Barrages would be okay. What do we have here? Um, not the most exciting pack. Can take a Carver, can take a Carriage, although... Red-Green is probably the color combination that's least interested in the Carriage. Just because we already have a lot of beefy creatures, so the Carriage is not necessarily a huge upgrade. Could also take Passage for fixing, which, you know, could also be a minor upgrade. There's a good chance I wield the Carver, although it is the only green card in the deck, in the pack. Don't think we're interested in Paladin if we're heavy green. If I take Carver, then I can easily cut, like, Barge in maybe the second Appetite, as we'll have plenty of pump spells already. Even the Dummy could make the deck at this point. I guess I'll take Carver. Jousts, Adversary, and Acolyte would all be great. First Instinct is the 4-drop here. Acolyte would give me another 3-drop, can ramp into the 5s a turn sooner, and it's an adventure for the Innkeeper, but this is a better individual card. How many knights do we have for Jousts? Like, I think Jousts would be quite good in our deck too, especially with, like, Sir Farron. Can deal a ton of damage. And it would give us that much-needed removal spell. That's a close one. <laughs> All right, well, uh, probably take another one. Don't need any of these. Could use another Ginger Brute, but this is also pretty good. I would have preferred one of each between Adversary and Joust, but can't really complain about a second one. It's a very good card. But how can I pass up on the Smasher here? Ratcap Raiders could maybe be better for Curve. Fling would also be a consideration in this type of deck. It's not inconceivable to cut the red, but we do have some pretty good uh, incentives to keep the red cards. If I cut red, then I don't have much at 2 or 3, so it kind of messes with the curve a bit. Look, if I put the adversary in the 2-drop slots, then the curve looks fine, right? Alright, definitely gonna take the Acolyte here. And already have two of these, a third one's probably overkill. Take a Rider. Raiders might make the cuts. Although I guess this is kind of a decision point. If I want to go mono green, then the Henchwalker might make the cut instead. So, do I want to go mono green? The mana base would definitely be better. Makes playing those one drops more appealing. Like the best red cards are the Trebuchet, the Red Cap, and the two Rimrock Knights by far. Shieldbreaker is also decent. So how does our green deck look like? So 31 minus 7 still uh, leaves us with plenty of playables. Could also splash reds for a couple Rimrock Knights maybe. 
but it's not an amazing splash card. It's much better if we can sometimes play turn two as well. I don't hate the mono green version, in which case I probably want a uh, Henchwalker. Kind of sad that we didn't pick up any out muscles. So, can maybe cut one once in future. Don't necessarily need both appetites, but I could see playing both. And yeah, this part of the curve could use a bit of help. So the walker is a good step. It is also non-human, so that's nice for the tracker. Yeah, let's take a walker. Probably not playing any of these. Like this could be a finisher for the mono green deck. This could be okay for red green. Dummy seems good. Also non-human for the trackers. Wow, I wield the joust. Hmm, maybe I should go red green now. Probably take another ginger brute here. Just want to be all out aggro. Halberd plus ginger brute is great. Ginger brute plus keeper of fables is great. Gives us a way to close out the game if there's a board stall. Weapon rack would also be serviceable, but I have a million four drops. And if we're mono green, then cabin seems good. Could even consider the fell the pheasants to have a bit of removal, but flying creatures are usually not a problem when we're playing this type of deck, since we can just kind of pummel our way through any small flyers. And a cabin seems like a pretty good incentive uh, to go mono green as well. Not playing any of these. So I think it's a close call whether to go mono green or red green. The fact that we have double tracker makes me answer Farron, makes me lean towards mono green just to have that smooth curve. Can play one fewer land perhaps. Gotta make a couple of cuts. I like the two halberds in this deck. Appetite looks fine. And intruder gives me a reasonable late game play as well. And then most of our two drops enable the tracker to hit for two. Bit of a nombo with uh, Sir Farron and the Curious Pair, but it's okay with Ryder and the Dummy. And then the Carver is another pump spell too. So yeah, I could shave an Appetite, I could shave the Curious Pair perhaps. And where does that leave me? 41 cards, could play 16 lands. Do have a few expensive cards that I wouldn't mind casting on curve though. The major problem is that I don't have a ton of mana sinks. I think Dummy's good, we just need more 2 drops. And it's both a mana sink and a non-human for the tracker. So in terms of food, we have double ginger brute, that's food, even though we don't necessarily want to sacrifice those for the Merrily Frider. I have a witch stalker, a cabin to make food, but the only food payoff cards are the riders, so it's not like I need a ton of food cards, I, and I guess the appetites if I play one of those. So yeah, I have carver, I have intruder, and I have acolyte, so that's three adventures that I'm happy to play. And yeah, like the opponent is going to be very tempted to kill this as soon as possible. And if this eats a removal spell, then maybe they don't kill my better creatures. So even though it's not amazing in our deck, it's probably still worth an inclusion. The major payoffs for going red-green. The red cap is quite good with pump spells. Double Rimrock Knights are pump spells and adventures for Innkeeper. Joust is decent and Shieldbreaker is okay too. And even Trebuchet is okay, so... Yeah, maybe that's enough incentive to still try and make red-green work. So I could have had a Raiders over the Henchwalker, which maybe now I'm regretting a little bit. So which cards don't I want if I don't go mono-green? Can probably cut the Appetite since I have double Rimrock Knight instead. Don't know if I need the Intruder, that could be cuttable. Could also shave some Merrily Friders if I need more space at two. I think Intruder can go since I picked up more Adventures and it's just uh, not super appealing anymore. Yeah, the curve looks a bit better. I've got more 2s and 3s, that's good. I think I can shave a Merrily Frider and maybe even Dummy. If I'm going red-green, I probably can't afford to play 16 lands, otherwise the mana base is going to be kind of a disaster. Could shave a Halberd. Yeah, I could cut the Cabin if I don't play the Merrily Friders or just one of them. Because I do want untapped green mana, turn 1 for trackers and innkeepers. So having a Cabin coming into play tapped could mess up my curve. Could shave the Dummy. Once in future can still be a nice late game tool, because I don't have a ton of like mana sinks and late game plays. I have the two halberds that I can move around, a couple adventures, like the carver I can replay, but that's about it. So having once in future to kind of refuel seems nice. I have quite a few knights for the trebuchet, so that's nice as another kind of way to finish the game alongside ginger brutes. Yeah, maybe one halberd. 
And maybe one Ginger Brute gets a bit worse if I go down to one Halberd. Yeah, maybe Brute is better than Tracker. All right, we'll, we'll make that swap, I guess. Do we have food to make Rider work? Don't have a ton of food. It's mostly just a 3-1. I have a Witch Stalker that makes a food token, but 2-mana 3-1 still serviceable. Like, the alternative would be the Jousting Dummy, which is a 2-mana two 2-1 two that can become a 3-1 if I spend 3 mana, so I would rather just have the 3-1 as a base. Yeah, this seems fine. All right, so it took a while to come to this uh, final build here, but I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, I don't really expect Sir Farron to be a two mana play all the time, but even at like three or four mana to help a double spell, it can be serviceable. But when we do get it turn two, it's gonna be great. Also, the Ginger Brutes are great with the Keeper of Fables, so that's another reason to play two of those. I guess I should use a Gingerbread Sleeve if we're playing two Ginger Brutes. It's only right. Give this a shot. I think the mana base is okay, 9 8, since I still need quite a bit of red early. A reasonable hand. Well, I can Hellbird just to have a blocker for the Ginger Brute here. It's probably fine. Oh, I guess this only equips non-humans. Yeah, probably should have waited on that then. Haven't played with this card much, as you can tell. The double Rampart Smasher should be quite decent. Sir Farron also knights for this Jousts. This might get countered, but then the Smasher doesn't. Kinda weird to see Drawbridge in a blue-black deck. Maybe they just want an O for a blocker. Not the Covetous Urge. Well, good thing we have another Smasher. Yeah, the Drawbridge can block my Smasher. Alright, if they can kill my Smasher, we're in trouble. If they don't, then we might be okay. So yeah, probably should have held this Halberd. Keeper of Fables is strong too. Yeah, if I still had my Hellbird in hand, then I could have played it, equip my Giants, and then use Joust to kill Smasher. So that would have been nice. I can equip the Hellbird to the Smasher attack, but then it still trades for Brute plus Smasher, which is not ideal. I could Joust using Sir Farron, but that doesn't quite work out against the opponent Smasher. Playing Keeper and just trading Smashers, I guess, could be fine. And then just make some attacks next turn. It's not ideal, like, losing two of my Smashers doesn't feel great. Smashers just a giant, not a knight. Adversary's okay. Could equip Halberd onto Keeper, attack with all, Sir Farron pumps Innkeeper, that seems okay. And then my opponent can't really trade for my Keeper, and all my other creatures at the very least trade. Let's do that. And these seem like fine trades. Another one. 
They can always go for a Rampart Smasher from my graveyard. They probably take the Adversary since that just blocks my Keeper. They can even play it for two mana here. Rimrock Knights. Don't have double red, so I can't play Knight and Joust. I guess I can just cast the Rimrock Knights, hope to draw a land of the Innkeeper. And then Joust can trade Knight for Adversary and I get to attack, which would be good. It's probably my best bet. Forest instead. And the next turn, we can uh, joust. So we got double Covetous Urged, but we're still in the game. Reaper's the reason I played out my lands. Ooh, nice. Ginger Brute plus Keeper of Fables is excellent. Although, <laughs> that actually doesn't work because my opponent has a drawbridge. So they can give the OKM adversary haste and block my Ginger Brute. But I could equip it with the uh, Halberd, but then I can't make it unblockable. So then they just block with the drawbridge, but I can do it next turn. Opponent might not know about it, but if they do, I get completely owned. Yeah, I can attack with Rimrock Knight and Ginger Brute, make Ginger Brute unblockable, and then one of them will maybe connect. So they get to eat my Ginger Brute if they want to. But now my Knight gets to connect. Maybe this wasn't actually good. I should have waited a turn on the equipment. Yeah, I guess this wasn't actually all that good. Yeah, hovering over the drawbridge didn't help. The Brute is a tap ability to sacrifice it, so we couldn't sacrifice it to gain life. Oh yeah, the, the play might have been indeed to just equip the Rimrock Knights with the Halberd attack, because then the drawbridge wouldn't have been able to block it. Yeah, th that was definitely the play. Not sure why I was so focused on the Ginger Brute there. But now with the Reaper, of course, they still would have been able to block Brutes thanks to the drawbridge. Now I can put Halberd on Rimrock Knights, I suppose. Offer the trade. And of turn, activate Trebuchet. Opponent's not really pressuring me, so that's good. They don't seem to be a mill deck, just like blue-black control. And as soon as I draw some adventures, we can start going off. Another adversary. Get to play this first for two mana. I could equip Innkeeper attack with both. But then I guess I can just block. I guess this doesn't actually do anything because I have a drawbridge on defense still. And yeah, let's just say go. Not sure what equipping the innkeeper really accomplished there. I guess just adversary attacks, and I might as well equip it first, so they can't trade up for the Bognaughty. Finally get rid of our own adversary. And uh, now the Keeper can maybe start attacking. Yeah, I'll make sure to use Trebuchet before playing my red cap. But I might draw something that I want to play instead here. Opponent's gonna jump and sack to the noble. That's fine.
The trade with the Smasher didn't feel great at the time, but it was probably necessary. This is a knight as well. So we're just gonna chump and sack to the noble, that's fine. Yeah, Halberd being pretty key here for us to make these attacks. Alright, opponent has seen enough. Alright, it's a bit of a messy game, but we survived double cover to surge, so that's uh, pretty nice. Now, this was a very like lengthy, grindy game, so Halberd really shined, but I could see it being a bit clunky in the more aggressive matchups where we don't have time to move it around 20 times. So I think I'm okay with keeping one Halberd in sight still. The only other pump spells in the deck are Double Rimrock Knights and the Carver, which all have additional utility as well. So I think I'm still happy with her configuration. Pretty good hands. This could definitely benefit from like a Halberd or a Rimrock Knights, ooh. Man, this curve is gonna be pretty exciting. Alright, that's fine. I guess we'll trade Sir Farron here, get in with a Brute, play Ratcap, and a Ratcap plus Rimrock Knight is excellent. And I can play Innkeeper before Rimrock Knight. We're kind of stealing the initiative. My opponent's probably going to be forced to trade for my 2-drop with their 3-drop while we keep developing. Rimrock Knight doesn't pump uh, toughness. So yeah, next turn I could pump with Rimrock Knight, play Keeper, play Knight, draw a card. That sounds like a good turn. <laughs> True Love's Kiss on my Ginger Brutes. Alright, it's pretty decent. Yeah, I think it's worth it to just use this now. Her opponent's at 9 life. At the very least, I get to play this next turn. Good top decks include more pump spells for the most part, Rimrock Knight being probably the best one with Innkeeper in play. But even the Carver would be great. All right, my Rat Cap is trapped, so that's probably the play they were considering turn 2 on Sir Farron. But they decided against it. Alright. Just playing some creatures to play defense. So don't have a great turn here. Rimrock Knight trades for Guide Mother is not too exciting. So I might be better off staying back and playing Adversary. Because if my opponent double blocks Adversary with, let's say, the Fox and the Guide Mother, I'm not upset. So that could have been a reason to trade Knight for Guide Mother, is so they can double block my adversary as easily, but they're pretty likely to have something else here too. That's an aggressive attack. Maybe they have a uh, Tactician to tap stuff down, or just a big blocker. Six mana. Yeah, my opponent could have an Archon, but then wouldn't they have played that first to get in for six? 
outflank could be a thing, although it doesn't currently kill the adversary. They could have the untap trick, giving plus two plus two. A big fat stone coil serpent. Adversary still attacks into it. I might even send everyone, including the innkeeper, since I don't have any adventures in hand anyway. Yeah, sure. Let's see what happens. It seems like it would benefit them to trade Rimrock Knight for the Guide Mother here. And now they potentially don't have that option. Right, opponent's gonna go for the Innkeeper block, which I'm pretty happy with. As I get the most damage and draw a card. Even though our deck doesn't have a ton of adventures, the Innkeeper is still a scary card that uh, our opponent showing a lot of respect for. But yeah, that being said, we drew a couple lands, so we might be in trouble. Thoughts on main deck artifact enchantment hates in best of one? Yeah, it's reasonable, like, some of them are better than others, but uh, if I need some more playables, I'm not too upset with main decking one. Ooh, wow. That's a lot of damage. The dummy now also able to trade for the adversary. Don't have any good blocks, so that's 12. And more lands. Flooded out a bit here in the end. Promising start. And we're just dead to the flyers next turn, so... Not much we can do other than... Smash and see what happens. Eh, still very much dead to the serpent attacking me. Oh well, flooded a bit. It's gonna happen from time to time. Pretty good hands. I can play Tracker into Ginger Brute and attack for 3 on turn 2. Yeah, Stone Coil Serpent's very good. Especially if you open it pack 1, pick 1, since it goes into any deck. Alright, blue red. And a shield breaker. None of my creatures in play are knights. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just uh, brute and attack. Can make my brute unblockable if I want to, or I could be okay with the trade. I think I would rather do this. Can attack, offer the trade basically for my trick and the brutes, and then play my Rimrock Knight, that's probably fine. Alright, well, this uh, Garenbrick Paladin is going to be pretty important for this hand to function. That lines up perfectly for the Jousts. But yeah, we're starting to flood a little bit already. And I kind of want a forest for Adamant, but... I guess the Paladin dies to a barrage anyway. Raiders good against my knights. So yeah, I don't really want to draw any more lands for the rest of the game. That's where the Halberds would also come in handy. Got a 4-4 Paladin. It's kind of the only thing we've got going for us. Got a lot of good 4 and 5 mana cards we could draw. Keeper of Fables would be nice if the Paladin connects. This is not a human, it's a giant. Another thrill. 
Fair enough. Brutes, I guess I'll take it. Yeah, the turn four rider getting jousted was pretty important for us. So yeah, best draw by far now would probably be the Keeper of Fables, but uh, 4 mana 5-5s five could also be quite good. Sadly there's a Barrage, but even an Adamant Paladin still would have perished. And my opponent is down to one card, of course they have the Witching Well to draw two more. But they are down to nine. So let's see, ooh, nice. That's what we needed. Could even send everyone, to be honest. They of course have uh, six more life they can gain with the golden eggs. It's gonna be Vandal into Sacrifice Witching Well, but now they can only sack one Golden Egg. That's fine. And that's a good draw. Do I send in my Innkeeper? Probably not worth it yet. Runaway. So tiny, sure. Huh. The trample's nice on the Witch Talker. Bigger is better. So, no need to really make my Smasher bigger. Now I think I'm leaning Trampler. Alright, so we're in good shape. And opponent has to pack it in. Well, that was a pretty key top deck with the uh, Keeper of Fables, but yeah, that was our pack one pick one, so... Glad to have it. So we're two and one, let's keep it up. Got an okay hand, not the most aggressive, but Smasher hopefully will be good enough. Eh, up against the mill. No, my keeper. And my paladin. My good five drops. Castle as well. This is going to be a tough matchup. There goes my Smasher. Yeah, that's a good start for my opponents. If they have another memory theft, so I'm gonna get wrecked, but so be it. Hmm. 
This is a bit weaker to another memory theft. Are we sacking a witching well? So tiny. Drown, sure. Think I acolyte plus uh, rimrock here. So we got a presser advantage here since my opponent probably has the late game covered with the castle ventress, all the card draw. It's a good draw. Close call there between attacking with Acolyte or just emptying my hand with the trebuchet. But getting in the damage while I can seems important. Alright, sweet. So, able to beat a good start from the mill deck too. That Rimrock Knight was pretty huge. And a nice opening hand. Tracker into Rimrock. Ginger Brutes. Playing Knight seems fine. Down goes the Rimrock Knights. But there's another one. Sadly, don't have double red, so I can't pump and play it. Otherwise, I definitely would have. So yeah, same play as last turn, I think. Their own trackers that are pretty aggressive too. Ooh, Piper. Well, I'm gonna want to kill that. And that works out perfectly. I get to Adversary and Joust. And then Joust with the Knights means it doesn't die, this dies. And I'm okay if it trades afterwards. So yeah. And still a good leftover in hand. Probably want to main phase play this in case they kill my adversary with a bacon to a pie, so I still pump tracker. It does give them a bit more information, so they could decide to kill Smasher, but keeping adversary alive is nice too. And they can decide what to bake. Never mind, Carver. Alright. But still has to go for the trade. Works for me. Although getting back Piper is scary. Just gonna have to try and race it. Alright, so opponent's at 7. They can chump my Smasher with her Rats though, and a Tree Fox, nice too. But we do have 2 damage per turn that they have a hard time interacting with, so that's kind of what we have going for us. I don't mind trading Smasher for Tree Folk.
Alright, so we're slowly killing our opponents. Does Tracker attack? Sure, why not? Play out my lands in case of a Reaper, and I might need more lands in play. Well, opponent's dead pretty soon here. If I top deck a knight, that does it, but opponent packs it in. Alright, 4 and 1, let's keep it up. Solid hand. The brute's also food for the rider. Plenty of knights for the trebuchet. Don't have to play a shield breaker right away. Ooh, never mind. Let's get me some value. Again, I could wait. So, how does this curve out? If I rider turn 2, turn 3. I kind of want to play Trebuchet, but then if I don't kill the Witching Well, they can sacrifice it. So I think it works out better if I just kill the Well now, instead of playing Brutes. And then turn 2 Rider, turn 3 Trebuchet, and then I still have a Knight to untap Trebuchet. Another Mill deck. Well, the once in future is going to be good at least. And so is Joust. Three open mana, I don't necessarily want to Joust here, as they could have all sorts of interaction, including uh, the Bounce spell. Now they could also counter my Trebuchet if they have a didn't say please, so it's kind of awkward. Could play Ginger Brutes. If they counter it, then I can still Joust. If they don't counter it, I can just give it unblockable and attack for one. Maybe that's the play. It's not a super exciting turn. But again, don't really want to go for any pump spells in the face of a bunch of blue open mana. So I'm probably just going to make this unblockable attack for one play shield breaker, which can at least trade for apprentice. Alternative would be playing trebuchet, which is also reasonable, just get it countered, but then I don't get to attack. Yeah, not sure what they're keeping up here. Alright, my Ginger Brute is now a 1-1 one, one Frog. It's probably time to attack with Rider and Shieldbreaker here. Can also add them into Once and Future now. Don't really want to use any tricks here. Alright, they are so tiny. And now I guess I can Carver. If they still have a uh, Runaway together, that's not great for me, but it's worth a shot. Ooh, a Brazen Borrower even. Yeah, that's pretty good too. So my carver fizzles. Not having double red is a bit awkward, so I can double spell Joust and Trebuchet. I mean, if they counter my Smasher, I can still get it back with once in future, so 
it's not the end of the world. It's just that trading off means that cards like Runaway Together become worse later. So what am I getting back with once in future? Mother Smasher and a Witch Stalker seems good. Don't really care about the Brazen Borwer attacking me for the time being. So I probably want to upkeep this once in future. In case their last card is a didn't say please. Targeting Smasher and a Witch Stalker. Bottom bottom. That's promising. So now is a good turn to try and joust if I want to. I have six mana total, so yeah, might as well. I guess I could still have a so tiny. Yeah, so tiny would make joust bad. So I guess I'll attack first. Alright, so now I'm convinced they don't have it. Probably still Smasher over Witch Stalker. It's kind of close. Trample could be more relevant than one power. Five plus one is six, so that might line up better in case they deal with one of them. So they're still dead on board. Sweet. Five and one. Ooh, nice. Seven dwarves. Alright, I guess I don't mind trading. This is a knight, but Joust is not enough toughness to make it survive. And then probably just play Acolytes. Opponent takes it, so they've probably got more dwarves coming up here. Secret Keeper plus Seven Dwarves. It's a strange combination. Question is what to do with this Rimrock Knight. Do I pump my Rider if they take it? Or do I keep it for the Rat Cap? Could also just play Rat Cap on defense, block and Rimrock. But then I open myself up to instant speed interaction from my opponent. I'll try it. All right, well, <laughs> this could hurt. So now the trick is not even enough by itself. It's just a trade instead of eating their dwarf. Could double block, but that's technically fine on board. And if they use a trick, I still have the Rimrock Knights. All right, so glad I didn't go for it. Uh, 
I guess I gotta pump the brakes a bit. Alright, that was a good pickup. Don't have adamants quite yet. So I could Rimrock plus Joust to kill seven dwarfs, so they don't have a Scorching Dragonfire. And then that means I can attack with Adversary and Rider. Yeah, let's try it. Probably could have tapped my mana better here. Yeah, I thought about it the second I attacked. Oh well. Not punished too badly. Didn't say please. Yep. Alright, so now the once in future can get back some action. Still 18 cards remaining, so not too close to getting milled out. Yep, more bouncing. So let's just replay this. Play my land in case of a mystical dispute. Thirteen cards remaining, a Rimrock Knight, a great draw. Alright, 6 and 1, time for the final boss. Perfect hands, turn 1 innkeeper, plenty of adventures. And hopefully uh, some artifacts to kill with the shield breaker, otherwise totally fine running it out turn 2 here. <laughs> nice. Yeah, could be an aggressive all that glitters type deck. Don't really need Acolyte in play, so I might be better off going Shield plus Ginger Brutes. Sure. That's fine. I guess I don't quite get to joust anything profitably, but uh can play this, make brute unblockable. Yeah, could start flooding out a bit here. Had a very good start, of course. But this is where we want to start drawing our 4 and 5 drops. And yep, there's all that glitters. But they are trying to race. Sadly, can't really follow up here. And it's out of joust range, even if I wanted to kill it. Alright, 
could be dead here. Yep. Alright, that's a turn late, but I'll take it, I guess. I might have to keep up Ginger Brutes, in which case I have to keep back Acolyte and I only get to attack for three. But then, can I kill my opponent on the following turn, since I won't have an answer for Tactician yet? So maybe I just have to jam, hope they don't have another pump spell. Yeah, the problem with playing it defensively is that I just die in two turns instead of in one turn. Uh, Joust only pumps my creature if it's a knight, and this is a cat. So I don't have enough to kill Tactician. Unless I were to draw a pump spell first. But I don't have the mana to set that up this turn. Are we dead? Another Tactician will do it too. Shepherd does it too. Alright, GG's. So yeah... Had to wait one turn too long for the Keeper of Fables. Not doing anything turn 5 was uh, pretty bad. So I could have potentially survived had I kept up uh, Ginger Brute mana. So yeah, close game. Well, this hand has a lot of uh, powerful curve toppers, but not that much mana. No double green for Sir Farron. So what does this hand need to draw? Basically forest into another land. It's pretty sketchy. This is potentially better. Might put the Ginger Brute on the bottom, just to keep the adventure to go with my innkeeper and keep all the lands to cast my adversary. If I knew I was drawing into land, then I might have bottomed it. Alright, another turn to dwarf. We might get dwarfed here. Mardu, going deep. Annabelle. That's a good draw, though. Could even use the adventure, but I think I just want to get this in play. Double blocking, pretty bad if they have a trick. I think I'll go for it. They might kill my innkeeper here. It's unfortunate. I figured if they had a trick they might have attacked with the dwarves too. More likely to be a good blocker here. Falmar Knights is a knight, so they can block my smasher at least. Alright, I guess we're smashing. Could also Rimrock Knight, and then still smasher, but I kind of want to keep it for Sir Farron. Could keep land in hand in case of Reaper, but if I draw land I want to be able to double spell. Alright. Barrage is unfortunate. Probably still smash. Hope they don't have removal for my adversary. Alright, that's a lot of death touch, but also a lot of knights.
Hmm. Nah, it's close. Because I kind of want to trade adversary for commander. I'll try this. Ooh, Joust. Rimrock. Surferon. Jousts. And attack. Oh, never mind. I guess my opponent can block Sir Ferran with a lifelinker. So they won't quite be dead. But they'll be at two. They have to trade off their Swordmaster. So pretty close to dead. So if I didn't trade off my adversary, then I couldn't have made this play, because then Sir Ferran would have died when I jousted. But still a pretty good turn. No! Epic downfall. That's a lucky top deck. Don't have a shock in my deck, sadly. Best I can do is a Ginger Brute. Uh-oh, what is this? A Witches? Better Witches, get back your Life Drain cards, go back up to five. Yeah, this game's over. Well, they had one turn to top deck, and they did. A lot of Rimrock Knight doesn't quite do it here. Well, very close game. Not sure if I could have done anything different. GG's indeed. We were on a mulligan too, so we definitely made a game out of it. And yeah, my opponent had two key removal spells, the first barrage to deal with the 5-5 five five, and then the epic downfall to deal with it the second time when it would have attacked for lethal on the following turn. Oh well, can't be too sad about uh, 6 and 3 leveling up and overall had some sweet games along the way. Ooh, another Harmonious Archon. I keep opening these in packs instead of in my drafts. And Outlaws, Merriment. Also pretty good in Limited. Alright, not bad. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.